my conclusion that there are no issues which would justify certification. The opinion affirms the trial court's decision substantially for the reasons stated by Judge Stuart A. Minkowitz in what it describes as his comprehensive and thoughtful statement of reasons. The underlying issue on appeal was whether the trial court improperly substituted his judgment for the board's. An extensive recitation and application of long-standing case law governing the standard of review by zoning board decisions by a court was made by the appellate court in concluding that there was no support for the board's determination that the negative criteria for a use variance had not been satisfied. The appellate court held the trial judge was correct in accepting Mr. Tinder's appraisal testimony and that the board incorrectly relied on Ms. Cook's testimony as a realtor. Case law governing the trial court's rejection of the board's credibility findings was found properly applied. To the extent the court relied upon the negative aesthetic impact of the sound barrier, the opinion notes that the board's reliance was inappropriate because the sound barrier did not require variance approval. The opinion rejected the argument that the proposed site provided only a de minimis improvement in coverage to alternative sites. Long established case law was cited holding that a wireless carrier is not required to prove the existence of a significant gap in coverage to satisfy the positive criteria under the MLUL. Case law permitting consideration of the gap in service as a part of the negative criteria under the MLUL's seek a balancing test is limited to, quote, the extent of the need for an additional cell tower, that is, the gap in service, balanced against the extent of the harm that will be caused by locating the cell tower in an area where its presence contravenes the local zoning ordinance. The opinion concludes, plaintiff's proposal did not call for the construction of a new cell tower or monopole, and the other sites considered by defendant to be viable alternatives did not provide any more than 60% of the 2.2 miles of coverage plaintiff was trying to remediate. We find no evidence the remaining 40% was de minimis. The appellate opinion relied on Supreme Court or longstanding appellate and federal court precedents in deciding the issues raised in the appeal. There are therefore no questions of general public importance which should be decided by the Supreme Court. The question of whether a separate pulp variance was needed for the board to consider the aesthetic impact of a sound barrier was addressed in an opinion footnote and is not of such general public importance as to warrant certification. A notice of petition for certification must be filed no later than September 5th, and the petition must be filed on September 15th. The petition is in the form of a brief and must be accompanied by the appellate opinion, appellate briefs, and a three-volume appendix. At least nine copies must be reproduced. The petition must contain a certification from the petitioner's counsel that substantial issues exist. Since I cannot make such a certification, a notice of the petition should not be filed. 